Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is September 17th, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I am going to talk about NASA's updated temperature report for August of 2018. But before I get into that, I'd just like to talk briefly about the underlying drivers of climate change primarily fossil fuel burning to include fossil fuel burning in electricity generation, fossil fuel burning in transportation, fossil fuel burning in industry, and the related efforts to extract fossil fuels and transport fossil fuels that also result in the majority of greenhouse gases emitted by the human system around the globe. And focusing in on this, i just like to talk about how important electing the right politicians into office is and how detrimental and damaging it is to elect the wrong politicians. Now, there is a false meme out there where you have people saying that, oh, it doesn't matter, all politicians are equally bad. That's absolutely not true. Obama was 100% better than Trump when it comes to climate change. Climate, uh, Trump is driving us completely in reverse. And though Obama did not do everything that he could to address climate change, he did numerous positive things, such as promote clean power, promote a rapid transition of the transportation sector, promote initiatives like the SunShot Initiative, which reduced the cost of solar energy, and scores of other initiatives that I could spend multiple blogs talking about here. Now, another example of a politician who has done a lot of good work when it comes to climate change is Jerry Brown. And today he is sounding an alarm about the U.S. auto industry, which is falling further and further behind those like China and, and another U.S. clean energy company by the name of Tesla, as the world itself looks to transition to clean energy vehicles and electric vehicles. And Jerry Brown notes that the big driver in transportation emissions reduction around the world besides California is China. And it's worth noting that California has promoted a number of policies that have greatly reduced emissions from the transportation sector and is driving these policies home, especially over the next few years. Jerry Brown notes the big saboteur is Donald Trump, he's trying to subsidize coal and destroy the electric car. If he gets his way and is reelected, I predict China, China will be the overarching dominant car man manufacturer in the world because they're spending billions to get the batteries to get the electric cars. So Jerry Brown here provides a snapshot of the kind of forward-looking thinking that is necessary not only to address human-caused climate change by promoting the industries of the future, but also to put the United States in a leadership position, both morally and economically, vis-a-vis -vis the rest of the world. Jerry Brown is right, Donald Trump is wrong. So looking at NASA GISS, we find that present global temperatures for the month of August were the fifth hottest on record behind 2014, 2015, 2016, and 2017. 2016 being the hottest, 2017 being the second hottest, 2014 being the third hottest, 2015 being the fourth hottest, and the fifth hottest being August of this year. Overall, looking at the geospatial representation of global temperature anomalies, we find that most regions of the world during August were, were warmer than normal, with the exception being a section of the Beaufort Sea and the adjacent regions of Canada. A prevailing cool pool south of Greenland as a result of Greenland melt, um, Greenland melt being driven by human-caused global warming and climate change, but a cool pool being a countervailing feature that is unfortunately likely to remain in place and continue to disrupt North Atlantic weather patterns with a few other noted cooler areas, one in South America and one off the coast of Eastern Antarctica. It's worth noting that the region of the Earth that was hottest 
or warmest compared to past temperatures, because these are anomaly, anomaly measures, was Antarctica with temperatures ranging as high as five degrees Celsius above normal. Now this is worth noting that this is polar winter, so these temperatures in Antarctica were still very cold, but showing substantial warming above typical temperatures for polar winter in Antarctica. And also following the established trend of polar amplification, which, which is a result of, of an accumulation of greenhouse gases in the Earth's atmosphere that greatly affect temperatures at the poles during winter time, providing a higher rate of warming in those regions. It's also worth noting that Europe has continued to be much warmer than normal through August, as has a section of north, north central Siberia, with much of the middle latitude zone in the northern hemisphere warmer to much warmer than normal, continuing a trend of, of record breaking temperatures that occurred primarily in July, but continued throughout the summer of 2018 for the no Northern Hemisphere. Looking at zonal anomalies, we find that no regions of the world were below normal in the latitudinal zones, with the 80 to 90 degree south latitudinal zone showing 4.1 degrees Celsius above average temperatures, which is a, a signature of polar amplification, as I mentioned before. It's also worth noting that the 40 to 50 degree north latitude zone was rather warmer than normal in the range of about 1.2 to 1.3 degrees Celsius above normal, showing continued higher than normal summer temperatures for highly populated sections of the northern hemisphere. Now, just looking at some longer term trends, it does appear still that El Nino is attempting to develop in the equatorial Pacific with numerous warm Kelvin waves funneling through beneath the ocean surface in the Pacific Ocean and, and a number of westerly wind bursts, most recent of which did occur in August, that appear to be helping to fuel a trend toward El Nino in the equatorial Pacific. It's worth noting that NOAA is presently predicting a 65 to 70 percent chance for El Nino during northern hemisphere winter, though this prediction chance or this predicted chance is high and elevated. It's still worth noting that there's a 30 to 35 percent chance that El Nino does not emerge, so not an insubstantial chance. So we'll need to check these trends going forward. If El Nino does occur, we can expect the record temperatures that occurred during 2016 to be challenged as greenhouse gases have continued to build up in the Earth's atmosphere and the ongoing warming trend since the 1880s has continued apace, especially since the 1970s where we have seen an acceleration in global atmospheric temperatures. It's worth noting that the peak periods of 1998 and 2016 overlie a longer term warming trend and a new El Nino in 2018 and 2019 will likely provide a challenge to 2016 records if it does emerge in the range of 1.2 to 1.3 degrees Celsius above the pre-industrial, above pre-industrial averages. So just an overview, once again, August of 2018 was the fifth hottest on record and the ongoing global trend of rising temperatures primarily produced by fossil fuel burning continues apace. Thank you for joining me and I'll be chatting with you soon.